So I finally got the new Rhino action figure from the Spider-Man Retro Card series, but is this one any good, Soulmates, and is he worth your money? Be sure you stick around until the end, Soulmates, because we're going to talk about what Spider-Man characters we want to see next. If you support what I do, please click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video of mine when it comes out. This Rhino action figure is based on a previously released Build-A-Figure that was released way back in 2015. That Build-A-Figure had a darker paint job, he had shoulder pads, he had a mask on, and he had a screaming face that looked kind of awkward. The major differences we see between the 2015 Build-A-Figure release and the new Retro Card release is that the new Retro Card release has a lighter gray paint job, but also the holes on the shoulders have been filled. Besides that, we also see two new head sculpts for Rhino, and they're both really good. One is more of a resting snarl face. The other one is a really angry face and they work so well with this character. So much better than what we got on that Build-A-Figure, I think. Besides the head sculpts, we're also seeing a couple of extra new hands with Rhino, both of which allow him to grab smaller characters in a variety of ways. These two open hands are not exactly the same, however. One is a little bit smaller, allowing you to grab on arms or legs or anything like that and just dangle Spider-Man or any other smaller character from Rhino's hand. The other hand is more open, however. It allows you to grab larger objects like a superhero's torso or their head. I think you can tell at this point that I really enjoyed Rhino. And something that I really like about this one is that even though it's from 2015, the body still looks really good. It has a lot of detail on it, and the skin on him looks really rough and cracked and leathery, and it just looks so perfect for his character. And not only that, but the way that the sculpt in general looks is kind of a perfect amalgamation of classic Rhino and modern Rhino. It feels like a nice compromise between the modern era and the era of old. That said, however, even though the sculpt really holds up, the articulation is where this action figure feels a lot more dated because we're seeing a lot of things from 2015 that don't really jive in 2022. There's actually a lot of articulation on Rhino that really stands out but the one I think that stands out the most is his torso because he has that ab crunch plus waist swivel. And the waist swivel on Rhino is much more noticeable than it is on a lot of action figures, especially smaller ones because, you know, Rhino is so big. So when you twist his waist, Boy, you really notice that waist swivel, and it's a little bit of an eyesore. I'm not going to lie about that. And his ab crunch is okay. It doesn't work super great because it only kind of has a couple of positions that he can really go in. He can bend forward one space, and that's about it because his torso doesn't allow him to bend backward at all hardly. It only clicks forward one spot, and then you have a little bit of leeway to play with some space in between the two clicks, but it's kind of hard to work with. And it still gets the job done, but it could be a lot better, and I wish they would have retooled his torso for this release, because I feel like the new ab crunch and torso swivel would have been much more appropriate and much more modern. Another piece that really stands out on Rhino are the ball jointed hips and this is something I actually do not have a problem with because I personally really like the ball jointed hips when they're well done. I feel that the ball jointed hips offer a lot more movement in the legs than we see otherwise on a lot of Marvel Legends. So to get these again was a very pleasant surprise in my experience. And I had a much easier time getting Rhino in all kinds of charging positions because of those ball jointed hips, I think, as opposed to the Hulk whose hips I had a really hard time operating and they didn't really go beyond a 45 degree angle. Rhino, however, I can almost get his leg to stick out 90 degrees at his hip, 
So yeah, this ball joint, if they can bring this back and stylize it a bit more, I think it works much better on Marvel Legends. Another piece of articulation I noticed was that on his elbows, they're just single jointed elbows, which is to be expected on a larger character like Rhino. I think the difference is that now the newer ones have an elbow swivel to go along with that single jointed elbow because it gives them more variation to play around with. We saw that on 20th Anniversary Hulk, we've seen it on various large Build-A-Figures such as Armadillo, and I think that it would work well on Rhino too. But because they are reusing a Build-A-Figure from 2015, he doesn't have that articulation and and it's kind of unfortunate because in some instances it was hard to get him in punching positions because I could operate his arm at the shoulder but then I'd want to move around his arm a little bit more at the elbow and it just wasn't there. It's another one of those situations where what you can do gets the job done but it's not as good as it could be. The last piece of articulation that really stuck out to me as being outdated was the head sculpt articulation because Rhino has two heads and when you put either of them on, he can turn his head side to side and he can move his head up and down. And that's very outdated for Marvel Legends because Marvel Legends now, for the most part, can look pretty much every way you can think of. Up, down, they can tilt their head side to side. Really, the sky's the limit for head articulation now, it seems like. But on Rhino, once again, we're looking at a situation where it looks good, but is it as good as it could be? No, it's a little outdated, obviously. This isn't to say that I didn't have fun with Rhino. I was able to get Rhino in all kinds of charging positions, and I had a blast playing around with him and getting him all over the Hulk and Spider-Man and stuff. Oh, it was so much fun. I had him charging at the Hulk, and the Hulk was ready to give him the old knockout, and then I had him beating up Spider-Man. He had Spider-Man hanging by his head and stuff. Like, I had Spider-Man in dire straits. It was really awesome. And to his credit, even though he feels really dated when you play with him, he does look really great when you're posing him and capturing photos, and just playing around with him in general feels really good, because you put him next to his classic enemies and it feels like you've got a battle that stepped out of the comic book pages. I really think that Rhino is one of those cases where if it isn't broke you don't necessarily have to fix it. It's just more of a case of going back and retooling the sculpt that they already have so that it has modernized articulation. And if they did that, this would be a pretty much perfect action figure. Because the sculpt as is, is pretty perfect. There is nothing on the sculpt that I would say needs desperately to be fixed. The only thing that I might change is to change the pinned joints to pinless joints, but that's just a little thing. Other than that, yeah, this action figure is great, and though I think you should check it out, yeah, I think it's worth checking out, guys. If you're a fan of Spider-Man or The Incredible Hulk, at all. This is definitely one that I think you want in your collection because this is pretty much the best version of Rhino there is. I put Rhino next to some of my old Rhinos from Toy Biz because they did make quite a few Rhinos while they had the license. And of course, the only one that really came close to this Rhino was the one that came in the box set with the fearsome foes of Spider-Man. That Rhino was based on the early art of the Spider-Man comics in which he first appeared, and it's a pretty good action figure, no doubt, and ironically, it does have the torso cut that the new retro card Rhino doesn't. But although it does have that one thing in its favor, it is a product of its era, and it doesn't really hold up next to the new retro card Rhino. I don't know if I've brought this up with you guys before, but something I'm a really big fan of on action figures is stability. And I really love it when I get an action figure that is very stable and doesn't fall down easily. And that is absolutely the case on Rhino. For a big boy like him, I would really hope so because he's got quite the base on him considering how large his feet are. But, you know, sometimes you get action figures that will just fall down, but not Rhino. 
He can pick another character up, he stays standing. He can take off on one foot running and he stays standing. This is not an action figure that falls down all that easily and I'm very grateful for it. Now all that said guys, I did really enjoy Rhino, but we do have to be honest here and he has a few things that could really be improved. This is an action figure that gets the job done, but there is so much room for improvement that I think I'm going to have to rate it a C. If he had all those dated articulation issues fixed, he would be somewhere around an A tier or an S tier because the sculpt is that good. It just needs that extra work put into it to put him over the top. Well, now that we've seen Rhino, guys, what Spider-Man character do you want to see next? Guys, I've been saying it again and again and again. I want to see a Dr. Octopus with articulated tentacles. I am begging Hasbro at this point, please make a Dr. Octopus with some crazy tentacles on him. That's my number one wish from Hasbro right now. And if I see it, if it happens, I will mark out. But if we don't get Dr. Octopus, I would also really like to see Kraven the Hunter, Chameleon. Kraven the Hunter is one that I really think should be released because he's a really good Spider-Man villain and he's kind of underrated, I think. Well, Soulmates, what do you think about this Rhino action figure? Is this one that you want for your collection now or are you on the fence? You have trouble deciding? Maybe this review puts you over the top, or maybe you're just not that interested in the character for some reason. Maybe something about the design rubs you wrong. I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I would love to hear from you, and be sure you tell me what Spider-Man character you want to see next. If you want to see my Marvel Legends 20th Anniversary Hulk review, you can check out that video here, soulmates.